Beginner's Guide to CB Radio, Video 4, Connecting Radio and Antenna. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Paul, Mike Zero, Whiskey November Uniform, or 26 Charlie Tango 730 if you catch me on 11 meters and PMR 446, or because this is the Beginner's Guide to CB Radio, just the red squirrel will suffice. So, here we are with the CB Radio here, Thunderbolt T800. Now, we've got to be able to connect the radio to the antenna. So, what we need to do is we need to we'll turn the radio off first. We need to look at the back of the radio, like so. The antenna will connect into this connector here. Now, the plug that fits that looks a little bit. I'll take it off this and I'll show you what that plug looks like. So I'll just take it off that for the moment. Don't need that right now. It looks something like that. And what you do with that is you would then connect it into here. Although this is actually quite a short cable, I will point that out. So you connect it in there and you'd screw it up until you couldn't screw it any further. Don't over tighten that, otherwise you could damage it. And then the other end here would then go to the antenna. Simple as that. Let's go back to the radio. So I'm going to take this one off because if you have a base antenna, that's pretty much how it would be. If you have a mobile antenna, on the other hand, it's slightly different. So whatever you're mounting the mobile antenna onto your car with, in this case, we're going to use this magnetic base, which has just attracted itself to the metal case of the radio there, as an example. So what I'm going to do so I'm going to move the camera around to where you can see that without hitting my arm off the chair because the chair's just actually next to me there. So we'll move around there so we can see the magnetic base. And I'm a very retro oscilloscope there. <laughs> yeah, that's not part of the video. It's the magnetic base. So I can't use the antenna I was hoping to use for this demonstration because it will just hit the ceiling before I can even screw it in, I should think. Actually... It might actually work. So I was hoping to use this antenna for this demonstration. It's the Orbiter style antenna, which is one of the most popular. Very popular for four-wheel four drive vehicles. So I'm going to just lean over and I'm going to screw that into there. Now you want to screw it in carefully. You don't want to cross-thread it, because if you do, you might damage the, the thread in the mount. I think that one is actually cross-threading, so I'm going to have to loosen it off. Yeah, because you don't want it to cross thread, otherwise you might damage the thread inside there. So just make sure that doesn't happen. This is actually a relatively unused mag mount, so I don't use it that often. So let's tighten that up without it hitting everything. And then once it won't screw any further, that's it in. There. That's not going any further now. So we can't screw that in there any further. So that's now in there. And I'll point the camera up so you can see. You can see it's just wobbling around a bit like that. So it's a good thing I'm not using the internal microphone on the phone because this tripod's actually creaking a bit. And there you can see the... You should be able to see more or less the top of the antenna. It's very close to the ceiling there. So let's bring that back down. So that's now in the magnet. And that's just really how you do that. And then at the other end of that mag magnet, you've got the cable. And then you've got a plug like this on the end, which this is inside. You push this through a, through one of the doors to pass pass it through into the inside of the car, and then. This is inside the car, and then plug this into the back of the radio. Simple as that. Now that's now plugged into there. So just remember, do not over tighten that, otherwise you could damage it. So now that's connected. If we switch the radio on, It should. 
start receiving things. So I'll bring that radio back into shot. Yeah, you could hear it's picking up interference and noise because it's in here. Which is to be expected because I do have things switched on in here. So if I was to transmit on another radio, which I don't have one to hand at the moment. <laughs> there we go, there's my handheld. That comes up as a full signal, so there you go. So now it's the antenna now connected, which means in theory you'd be able to then plug the microphone in and transmit. Although it's not as simple as that, because this would need to be on a metal base, it isn't, so this means this will not work properly. So it has to have something metal underneath it in order for it to work. And I will explain that in the next video. Although back in the olden days of CB when it first came out, people were using these, well, though not specifically these aerials, but these magnetic bases with whatever aerials they had on top of biscuit tins. Or even a radiator would do it. Um, that's how I first started out back in the early 2000s. Just a magnetic mount with actually one of one of these. Same colour, because this one's actually originally originally a black one. My spouse and I actually painted this white. And I've also used that on top of patio heaters and uh, sheets of metal. And it's worked quite well. So... <laughs> Yeah, so that's how I did my little aerial experimentations. So, that's the aerial connected to this radio. Aerial screws into the mount. And connector screws into the back of the radio. The connector is called, on the radio side, SO239. And on the cable side, PL259. Now, obviously, there is another way of connecting an aerial to a radio. Now, if you have a handheld radio, not that realistic because that's got the telescopic aerial built into it. Now, these have a slightly different connector on them. Sometimes they have a screw-in type, sometimes they have this type, which is very reminiscent on how you'd put a light bulb into a light socket in this country. See the little two studs there, which are like what you get on a light light bulb. I can actually show you a light bulb um, if I can reach one. So as you can see this has got the same little two two studs on it so when you push it in you push it in and it twists and it locks. It's exactly the same on this handheld CB radio except the difference is the studs are on the connector not on the aerial. So Again, you'd push it on and twist it till it locks. And that's how you connect that to your handheld. Actually quite simple, that one. Obviously, there are other types of aerial connectors as well. On this realistic TRC-1007, the connector is effectively very similar to what's called a phono connector. Although, I don't believe it's the same as a phono connector. I just know it's very similar, but you can get adapters. I think they are still available. Although this has a telescopic aerial fitted to it, which, unless you take the radio apart, you can't actually remove. So, that basically covers how to connect the radio and the aerial together. So, till the next one. 1010 till we do it again. Or, as they say in the amateur radio world, or even sometimes on CB, actually, which I'll cover again in the terminology video later on, 73. So, until the next one, guys.